بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال الله جل وعلا في كتاب الكريم يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون وقال جل وعلا إن الذين قالوا ربنا الله ثم استقاموا تتنزل عليهم الملائكة أن لا تخافوا ولا تحزنوا وأبشروا بالجنة التي كنتم توعدون وقال جل وعلا في كتابه في كتاب الكريم بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات كانت لهم جنات الفردوس نزلا خالدين فيها لا يغبون لها حولا صدق الله العظيم وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من سام رمضان إيمانا وإحتسابا غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام So Alhamdulillah Brother and Sister Islam we are here located on the 25th or 24th night of Ramadan Mubarak which makes it an odd night night is an odd night for the last 10 nights of Ramadan and really as a reflection of the last few weeks the last 25 days we should really look back at just at how quick these days have passed these nights have passed and really it's a time of reflection for all of us for, for brothers and sisters for the old for the young in order that we sit down and we assess our situation in this life and the, the purpose of today's reminder is to prepare myself firstly for once this guest he, he leaves us what do we do after he has left us this great guest of Ramadan and Mubarak how do we respond how should we how should we uh, respond to the leaving of this guest? When you get familiar with the guest for a long time, it's difficult to uh, say, you know, uh, ma salam to him, to say, to say farewell to him. As the Prophet sallallahu alaihi said many times when he was leaving Makkah to Mukarramah, his heart was, was, was full of sorrow when he had to leave his hometown. And similarly, when we have a, a guest in our house, you know, who we, we've stayed with for a day, two days, three days, when it's time for him to go, it's something which is very, very difficult. And the same thing with Ramadan and Mubarak, it was really, a, it is a great month. It was a month where we all worshipped for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We prayed, we fasted, we did all our good deeds. And we, you know, we, we, we joined in in the breaking of the fast, of the suhoor, on the qiyam al -layl. And it's something which really is going to be difficult for all of us, especially those who have been affected uh, by this, uh, the blessing of Ramadan to bid farewell. But like anything else, life must continue. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran that it is only his being, his deity which will remain on this earth. Everything else shall perish. So everything must perish except for the blessed uh, and the gratitude and the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this should be our uh, belief and this should really make it easy a, bit, a little bit easier for us that when the time of uh, the ending of Ramadan comes it will be easier for us to bid farewell to this great month so just a few a few reflections some reflections uh, on the month of Ramadan before I go into the, the main uh, topic I'll try to finish before 8 o'clock inshallah I will not keep you too long brothers and sisters Islam because it is after Asr we're all fasting we all need to get ready for tonight for Tarawi for the uh, Qiyam don't forget today is an odd day, odd night as well, so try to make uh, preparations for your Qiyam al -Layl. Even if it is on your own in your houses, uh, then try to make the arrangements for this day, inshallah. So just a, a quick reflection of the month of Ramadan. Firstly, the speed that it came and went really surprised me quite a bit. And I'm sure you'll probably be in the same uh, situation that the, the Ramadan came and it went very quickly, very swiftly. So this is something which need to, we need to reflect upon. That this is the reality of our lives. You know, we are here one minute, the next minute we could be gone. So this we should really we will reflect on this quite deeply in order Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know, could benefit you on a daily basis because Ramadan was a full month uh, training uh, period for you, for your souls, in order that you dampen your souls, you know, you take control of your soul. And alhamdulillah, while your souls are still under your control somehow, you, it's a time for you to make uh, a future pledge and also a future intention of what you are going to do after Ramadan ends. So what I have, I have some uh, notes here and I've also got some paper and pen which I'm going to distribute in a bit. But I just want to go through a few things uh, with you, brothers and sisters Islam, before describing um, the acts which really can show to you as a Muslim, as a Muslimah, that your Ramadan has either been 
accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or it has been rejected al-iyad billah. So these are a few things which I will be covering later on. As also I'll be covering the main purpose of the whole month of Ramadan. You know, why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put you uh, through this test of fasting, keeping away from the halal things. What are the main benefits and also what does he require from us as his servants, Jalla wa ala. First thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us this month a month, a long training, in, a, in order to put to test our Iman. That is the main purpose. He's putting our Iman to test in order to see who from amongst us will be successful and who from amongst us will be un unsuccessful from this trial. As the day passes in Ramadan, your, your Iman becomes firmer and firmer, stronger and stronger. And then towards the end of Ramadan, as we are now, your, your Iman as, is at such a level by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you are able to control your nafs better. Your nafs is being controlled by yourself better. And by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your trust in Him builds to a certain degree where you find it easier to perform your acts of worship, your salat, your zakat, your, your etc. Any good deed, it becomes easier for you to uh, carry these out. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he would fast the month of Ramadan, also he would fast the other months as well, in, in, especially the, the next month which is coming, Shawwal. It is a narration that he وسلم, fasted for six uh, days in this month, which we should all try to keep uh, the six days of Shawwal. <coughs> so we get up quite early in the morning, we have our suhoor, we, we have the whole day praying and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we have the iftar and the prayers at night, and we are told to keep away from the halal, uh, actions which are usually halal in other months, but in this month Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to see who from our monsters is able to keep away from these halal actions. You know, we go for the Taraweeh prayers every night, and every year this uh, cycle is, is repeated time and time again. There must be a reason behind it, Brother Sister Islam, which we need to really try to, you know, that, you know, to, to uncover in order that we benefit the most from this month of Ramadan. Don't forget the month of Ramadan, it has two aspects to it. It has the communal aspect, the jama'ah, it also has the individual aspects. So the individual aspects is something which I want all of you to reflect upon. And this is one of the reasons I'll be passing over this uh, notepad for, for all of the brothers inside, for, who are here inside the masjid, in order to fill up and to have some sort of a plan after Ramadan, what would you like to carry on that you are doing currently in this month that you would like to carry on and build upon after Ramadan? Yes, I want all of you to, uh, to think of something that you, are, you enjoy, first of all, you, you must enjoy that action and something you would like to carry on after the month of Ramadan. It could be something simple as the prayers, five daily prayers, some nawafil, some sadaqah, some anything good, charity, some, uh, you know, anything that you think might be pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, looking after your relations, anything that you, you might think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be happy with. So I want you to think about that before I pass around the, uh, the notes, inshallah. What we mustn't come out of this month from is that we mustn't come out of the month with this worry or with this um, with this mentality that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he might accept. You know, we should have this firm belief from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and these are the days to, to do that is to have full faith in his uh, acceptability that he's going to accept it and you have to beg him. I mean, something which is not going to come easily but this is the time really, these next five days, five nights is the time where you beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I mean, if it was someone else, you wouldn't have no quens, you wouldn't have no problems in begging him for a job interview, for a car, etc. But what we are begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for is something which is higher, more greater in value, and it's something which is a long-term, permanent uh, thing which we are asking for. We're not asking for a job which will, will last maybe 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. We're not asking for, you know, for any other favors. We are asking for something which will benefit us in the hereafter. So now is the time where you beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for acceptance. Qabul, this is something the scholars, they say that the last 10 nights are made for these, this uh, reason. It's to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the acceptance from the fasting. Like I mentioned to your brother and sister Islam earlier, the fast has two aspects to it. It has the bodily, um, so every, anything which we do, like the salat, the zakat, the hajj, it has mostly two components to it. With the fasting, it only has one component, which is the spirit. This is something which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to dampen, to control, which is our ruh, our spirit. 
in order that we keep away from the food, from the drink, and sexual relations with our wives or husbands, in order that to see who is able to control the desires the best. And really this is one of the reasons why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the, in the hadith that everything else there's a reward for, specified reward for the prayer, zakat. But he said the, the fasting, I will reward that according to the intention and how much uh, you know, effort the person has made into the fasting. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he wants to test us like I mentioned earlier and he wants to also bring us closer to him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not forget the ayah which I recited in the beginning of the reminder that the main purpose for the fasting is taqwa. This is something which I want you to all to measure you know, yourselves is how much taqwa you have actually achieved. Give yourself a mark from 1 to 10, you know, 1 very low, you know, 5 is sort of halfway, 8, 9, 10 is, is high. How you can work this taqwa out is, is how, you know, how much closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have you achieved in this month, i.e. how much of his fear, of his hope, you know, in his, in his punishment, in his reward, how much of that has changed your, your heart. Has it changed a lot? If it has, then you should be on the high level, the 8, 9, 10s. If it hasn't, then you mark yourself low, but it's something which you need to work on after Ramadan comes to an end. Because this, this, this month of Ramadan, it acts as a shield and it acts as a protection for all, your, for all the bad things. But once the Ramadan is finished, then it will actually take you, it will take you longer to achieve this taqwa in the rest of the month. So really Ramadan is the best time to, uh, to do all these activities. And this is why I have, we have still have five days. And I wish we could have done this about five days earlier in order to give more time for the brothers to go back and reflect. This is all something which is done in a personal um, dynamics where you sit down on your own, in your own sort of uh, comfort, and you, you write down one, two, three, four, five. These are the things which I want to do. And then also you measure your taqwa level, how much you think you have scored yourself. Because there's nothing wrong with that. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was, was continuously assessing himself and he was told his companions to assess themselves when they get up and when they, when they go to sleep at night, write things down of how you think you have achieved uh, you know, anything in this month of Ramadan. And I'm sure all of us have achieved something. I mean, this month of Ramadan, it will affect even the, the worst of the worst. You know, this month has an effect on every single person. I will explain to you later, I mean, there's two types of people in Ramadan or after Ramadan. But one of them is a person who has sinned all, his, you know, all the year, but when Ramadan comes, he is the, he's in the first row, he's reading Quran, he's, he's crying in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he becomes close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So every single person who is a Muslim, who, who witnesses Ramadan, will be, will be affected. This is just this is natural, this is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed. There's no doubt about that. I mean, you, you see it all the time, and a lot of brothers and sisters, Ramadan is there for them to come back to subhanahu wa ta'ala and the glorious. Let us talk about a few things uh, before we go on to this. Uh, I would like a hand from someone uh, when, when we've got time to distribute these uh, little notes, just to give them out to the brothers in order to uh, write them. I don't want to see these notes, but I just want, them to, I want you to write them down yourself and take them with you uh, when you go home in order that you have some sort of a, uh, feedback for yourself. So if you just write, take one and write it down and pass it down to the brothers, inshallah. Imam, would it not be better for people to put it in their phones, in their notepads? You they could do, yeah. They can record it and they can keep it as well rather than losing it afterwards. Okay. You could do. I mean, if anybody wants to write them down, then they, if anyone hasn't got their phone, then you can write it down. Otherwise, you can put it down in your phone. That's even better because your phone is with you everywhere nowadays. So I think it's better to have it. If anybody wants uh, to write it down, we have some papers here in Sharon. So this is something I want you to do, brothers. Have a vision. Have a plan of action for after Ramadan. Because this is what I'm going to talk about now is after Ramadan and the situation of, of us as Muslims, as both as an individual and also as a community. Because I want you to take both aspects into consideration. Not just, I mean, we don't want to be selfish and just say that we just got to think about ourselves, no. I want you to think about the community around you, this masjid, the people that live around you, your family, your relations, every single person has a right upon you. So, there's an ayah in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells, explains to us that there was a lady at the time of Musa and um, she, she, tied, she, she did some very good work in her time, some charity work, but in the end she spoiled it through sinning and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the example to her that do not become like the ones who ties the knot in, in firmly and then destroys it with her, with her own hands. 
So the same parallel goes to for us. We have worked hard in the month of Ramadan. We have, you know, we have, uh, you know, what's the word for it? We have slogged in this month, you know, we have Alhamdulillah, we've done as much as we can. You know, we've stayed awake. Uh, some of us stayed awake all night. Some of us have, uh, you know, have done the Salah, the, the Nawafil. We have read the Quran. And it'd be a shame to let you go to waste. I mean, it would be really similar to the lady who tied the knot and made it firm, and then it just goes to waste the next day. It gets untied. So do not be like the one uh, that after Ramadan that she uh, that we or uh, you know we untie it and that it becomes unspun after it had become strong by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And the only way that's going to be done, brother, sister, Islam, the ulama, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi also gave some advice of how we can stick. Uh, to the routine of this month of Ramadan. Really, the main thing um, that we should be aware of, that one thing that must remain with us throughout the year is the patience. I mean, one, one thing which we learn about in the month of Ramadan is patience, sabr. Uh, and that helps us a lot in the month of Ramadan. You are fasting, you become angry, someone says something to you, you know, you come to the masjid and, you know, there's something's not right, and you, you want to say something, but you just, you have to be patient. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching you patience, in ways which you wouldn't be able to learn in other months. So the month of Ramadan teaches you excellent patience and this is something which we need to carry on throughout the year in order that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know, uh, gives us the strength and he likes and he loves the ones who are patient. So please try to make four or five uh, goals for yourself after Ramadan of what you want to do and inshallah keep it as a ahad between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and try to increase whatever you're doing now, try to increase it throughout the next few months. So if we have this patience to do righteous deeds after Ramadan, then this is a sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the fast has been accepted by the majority of ulama. They have said that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you the patience firstly, and then he gives you the ability to carry on with whatever good deeds you were doing. Say for instance, in Ramadan you were giving 20 pounds a week in sadaqah. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you the ability to carry on with that after Ramadan, then that is one of the signs Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has accepted your fast. Same thing, if you were praying five daily salat in the masjid, and that is something you carried on after Ramadan, also this is another sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has accepted your fasting. Because He is the most generous, He is, the, he is full of blessing, He is the bestower of blessings. But again, on the other side, on the opposite side of it, if for any reason that we fail, and may Allah make, may not make us from amongst those, who stop doing the righteous deed after Ramadan and we start following the ways of the shaitan, then this is a sign of humiliation, brothers and sisters. This is a really uh, strong warning. This is a, a sign of uh, you know, someone being deprived of the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you have, Ramadan has finished and you have gone back to your old ways. So this is really, there's an uh, ayah here, and, and Hassan al-Basri, he says, it's a call of the, these are old uh, narrations from the early generation, Hassan al-Basri, he says that these people who left and didn't carry on with the good deeds, he says, they were no longer of any significance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they committed sin. If they had mattered to him, Jalla wa ala, he would have protected them. It is a serious warning that those who are no need, Allah doesn't need them, he would just, you know, after Ramadan, they would go back to their own, own ways. So when a person becomes insignificant to, in, insignificant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will no longer honor him. He will not, not give him any izzah. And Allah says in the, in the ayah, and whomsoever Allah disgraced, وَمَن يُخْزِلْ فَإِنَّهُ لَا مُضِلَّنَا None can honor him. Anyone who Allah disgraces in this world, Allah, none, none can honor him in this world or in the hereafter. So we should really keep this in, in, in our mind. The first point which I'm trying to go through it bit by bit is that we should really have this, the karma of patience of our a'mal, firstly, after Ramadan. And keep, you know, keep this warning in our head that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we want you to you know, keep us significant in this dunya, not to disgrace us. Always make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that make us humble in front of your eyes. Do not make us arrogant or do not make us mutakabbirin as were the, the Fir'aun of the time and the Hama. Make us, you know, just normal Muslims who, who worship you for the sake of yourself alone. What we say is that we, I'm just going to another example that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He shows us in Ramadan that, you know, we see people, brothers and sisters in Islam, who do all the good deeds, the fasting, the charity, prayer at night. And then, like I said, to you, when they, the month goes, it completely, the, the outer activity changes, and they have bad attitude towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
So you see them neglecting their prayers, the salawats, and righteous deeds, committing sins, and disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in different ways, keeping them, you know, Allah subhanahu keeps them away from him because he, he has forgotten of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you forget him, then he will also not, not you know, uh, remember you. So you have to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all times. You should acknowledge him in Ramadan, after Ramadan, and also until the next Ramadan comes. You should always acknowledge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by calling upon him, saying astighfar, calling him subhanallah, alhamdulillah, saying this tasbih all the time. This is the only way you are you're going to actually, you know, refocus yourself by remembering him, Jalla wa ala. I mentioned this yesterday that this Ramadan should be an opportunity for all of us to retune ourselves, you know. It's, it's actually a full, a full MOT of the body and also the soul. We should turn a new page in our lives, you know, whatever has happened in the past, we shouldn't bring that up again. And we shouldn't, you know, try, we shouldn't, you know, remind ourselves of the bad sins. We should, we should, yeah, we should hate the sins, we should, you know, we should detest them, but we shouldn't allow these sins to, to, you know, to control our lives in the future. Because it happens, sometimes brothers, they change their ways and sisters, but they are still thinking about what they did last year or the year before. And because of that, they, you know, they, they're unable to keep that istiqamah, unable to carry on with their good. This is the plot of the shaitan, how clever he is. He reminds you that, oh, you know, you did such and such sin, you know, how can you be forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa this, this, this is the way of the Jews, this is how they used to think. And they used to um, think in a way which is negative, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us against this many times in the Holy Quran. So we should be positive, and we shouldn't be a negative community in our lives. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gives, an, gives an, an advice. I will go to this advice uh, after uh, finishing the topic which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us Ramadan. He is the Rabb of Ramadan, He is the Lord of Ramadan. Ramadan has gone, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always there. So we shouldn't think that because Ramadan is gone, now is the time to relax, you know, put our feet up, you know, we've done our bit. No, now is the time to carry on, to build on what you have achieved in the month of Ramadan. Continue to obey him, Jalla wa ala. Avoid the sins. The more you avoid the sins, the more barakah you'll find. And evil actions, keep away from any evil actions. And continue as you were in the month of Ramadan. Continue what you were doing to get close to him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are many things which you can do to get close to him. From them is the recitation of the Holy Quran. The dhikr, keeping the company of the pious people, you know, the, uh, the scholars, the ulama, the, 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 you know, the people who call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, keep the company in order that you will have, they will have an effect upon you. The Prophet sallallahu tells us in a famous hadith, he give, he's given advice to his sahaba, that when you commit a bad deed, follow it with a good deed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet sallallahu says, when you follow a bad deed with a good deed. If you, do something, if, you do, if you make a mistake, don't just pause there and think about it for the rest of the day. No. Straight away, follow it up with a good deed. Either charity, dua, prayer, salat, anything which you think in your, in, in your eyes is good, follow it. Don't let that sin to eat you up and say to you that, oh, so-and-so, you have done a sin. You know, how, could, how shameful are you? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to forgive you. Follow up a bad deed with a good deed. First advice, because it will wipe it out and, it, and have a good attitude. This, this, the, the, the last bit is the most important bit. Have a good attitude and a good thinking of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't think negative about Him. Always think with a positive uh, attitude that Allah is Rauf Rahim. He is going to forgive me as long as I change my ways. And the final advice He gives, and have good manners towards people. Be good amongst your people. For, you know, treat them the way you would like to be treated yourself. Do not be rude, do not be harsh. Road backbiting. We were going through today so the Hujarat. There's a, a big list of things which we should keep away: backbiting, cutting tails, calling one another by names, etc. So this is one one of the things we should do: follow a bad deed with a good deed. Really, this is the uh, the main purpose for for the Ramadan is was the worship of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and all the time we are reminded in the various uh, surahs of the Quran to worship none but Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and only till we achieve this. Until we achieve this uh, status, we'll be able to you know, have reliance upon him and follow a good, uh, bad deed with a good deed. So this was the ultimate purpose and we hope and we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we have achieved this ubudiyah, which is being slave to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is nobody higher than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the highest and you know, we are his uh, slaves, we are his abd. And if this was achieved in this blessed month, then inshallah the rest of the months 
will be made easier by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It will be easy for us to visit the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the masajid, to pray the salat, to perform the obligatory prayers on time and to give in charity. And we'll be competing in one another, not in building the houses of this dunya, but building the houses of the akhirah, i.e. competing in doing good deeds. So and this is one thing we had today in the, uh, in the tafsir, that we should compete in, in, for, you know, we should compete with one another in achieving the maghfir of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and doing good deeds. There's nothing wrong with that. And this is something which is, uh, uh, you know, so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam encouraged that we should all compete with one, one another for the maghfir of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not feel ashamed. And we don't feel shame, you know, if someone's bought a car, we don't feel ashamed that oh, we'll have a better car or we'll have a better house. But when it comes to the, uh, for the deen, for the religion, we sometimes feel, you know, we feel we hold back. We feel that, you know, we cannot come. We should compete in acts of good deeds. Allah Subhanahu wa tells us in the Quran that, and for let this, let let those who strive who want to strive, for they will be rewarded in So Allah tells us those who will strive in His path in the good deeds, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will reward them. But again, those who Allah Subhanahu wa Taala keeps away from His mercy, Allah also tells us that on the day of judgment, He will uh, we will take them to account and they will be looked into. Allah tells us as well, whomsoever Allah he helps to be steadfast in doing righteous deeds after Ramadan, Allah says regarding his people in the Holy Quran, to him ascend all goodly words. Yeah? And the righteous deeds exalt, i.e. the goodly words which are not accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, until they are followed by goodly. This is the meaning of this uh, ayah, that they will only be accepted if they are followed by a good deed. For those who plot evils, there will be severe torment, punishment, and the plotting of such will uh, perish. So really, just to con conclude this uh, part of it before we go on to the next bit, is that the good deeds and the righteous deeds are some of the acts which we should concentrate after Ramadan. And these are, these are definitely, without doubt, the things which will bring us close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I want you to all make notes of which good deeds, firstly, you think that you enjoy the most, and secondly, that you think you can build upon after Ramadan. I've already mentioned this, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the Lord of Ramadan, as He is the Lord of Shawwal, Sha'ban, al qaidah Muharram, and Safar, and all the other months. And we are, our purpose is not to worship the months, but to worship the creator of the months and the owner of the months. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us that how we worship Him is through the five pillars of, of one, which is, is the fasting, and which is for a set period of time, which comes to an end, like we are now at this moment. And there are other pillars which you can uh, you know, achieve and you can do, which is the Hajj and the Zakat and the Salat. We must perform all these duties, brothers and sisters, the five pillars are our basic must. I mean, once our five prayers, five pillars are in place, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make our affairs easy. And they must be done for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And we must really strive hard in these things. I mean, I mean, sometimes you might feel that you know, it's difficult for you to perform your prayer due to work, etc. But you need to really make time for it. You know, you know, your work should be going around the prayer, not your prayer. You know, sometimes we, we arrange things around the prayer, you know, you say that, you know, okay, we'll do such a thing, we'll do the prayer at this time. It really, your prayer should be fixed, and it should be everything else which works around your prayer. This is how the, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to do, and this is how the Sahaba, Ta'ala, they had priorities, the, the main priority for them was the prayer, and once the prayer was, was done, they would go back to their work. And this is something which we need to uh, uh, imp uh, apply in our lives and we need to really go back to the main purpose of why we were created as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us today in the Quran, in the uh, tafsir, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have not created the jinn and mankind except they should worship me alone, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then, you know, this would be our focus point at all times. Whenever we feel that, you know, we are lacking in our salat, in our zakat, in our fasting, etc., we should go back to this uh, ayah of, of the Holy Quran and really ponder upon it. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing not just the mankind, but also the jinn. So he has created both beings for the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let me quickly finish off with some other signs of acceptance of, of, this, of the Ramadan. Is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there's another narration here which is a bit longer, but I will, I will just mention it briefly. That the signs of the acceptance of most deeds, including the, uh, the fasting, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala causes one hasana, one good deed. So the earlier one was what? That he causes the bad deed to be followed by a good deed. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala causes one hasana to be followed by another. Because the hasana, the good deed, he, uh, he will say, 
or she will say, my sister, my sister, and the, uh, the sayyah, the evil deed will say, will also say, my sister, my sister, we, ref we seek refuge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if Allah has accepted the good deed uh, from the person, i.e. the Ramadan, and he has benefited from this period of the spiritual training which he has gone through, and he has remained steadfast in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in obeying him, then he has joined the, the, the camp of those who are successful and those who have remained steadfast. Because don't forget there are two forces now. There's the forces of the evil and the forces of the good. So both sides will be pulling you towards them after Ramadan. So depending on which one you accept, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide you towards that. But we are, we are told, we are reminded in the Quran, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهُ ثُمَّ don't forget this ayah, brothers and sisters, are very, very important. I mentioned a few days ago, verily those who say, our Lord is Allah, and then they stand firm on what they do, that on them the angels will descend at the time of their death. So there's two narrations. One is at the time of their death and also in this world, saying to them, fear not, no grieve, but receive the glad tidings of paradise with which you have been promised. And they also tell them, this person, that we have been your friends in this world, in this life, and are also your friends in the hereafter. Therein you shall have all that your inner selves desire, and therein you shall have for which you ask for. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from amongst these people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to the straight path. And whosoever takes Allah, there's also another uh, ayah, whosoever takes Allah, his messenger, and those who have believed as protectors, then the, the party, the group of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be victorious. So the standing firm of after Ramadan should continue. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells us in another hadith that the, the daily prayer, you know the five salawat al-khamsa and the Ramadan to Ramadan, for the Hajj to the Hajj, yeah, the Juma to Juma, this expiates from, uh, for whatever sins were committed from one to the other. So as long as you avoid the major sins, yeah, so as long as you avoid the major sins, so these period of times are the times where you, your sins will be forgiven by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And also Allah tells us in another ayah, if you avoid the great sins which you are forbidden to do so, we shall expiate from you your smaller sins and admit you to a noble entrance, i.e. a paradise. Just to finish up, brother and sister in Islam, um, we, I've already described the two types of people after Ramadan, but I don't want to repeat it because I've already done it, but the, two the main two people is those who feel sad. I mean, at this uh, time, at this moment, there are two types of people um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching and one of them is the one who is sad because the month of Ramadan is finishing and the other one cannot wait till the month has finished. Yes, yeah, so there's two types of people uh, at this point of time. We should be from amongst the first type of people, brother sister. We should be upset, we should be saddened to see the, the month finish, but that shouldn't really put us down in any way. It shouldn't, you know, it shouldn't be a point where we think or oh, we shouldn't lose hope that Ramadan is finished, oh, you know, that's it, I can't worship him anymore. No, this should be really a time where we ponder upon the, what I just mentioned earlier, and also it should be a time to reflect, you know, seriously have accountability for yourself, write every single bit down what you have done, what you hope to do before the next Ramadan. So this should be a year-long plan, what you plan to do before next Ramadan finishes. So when Ramadan enters, inshallah, and we are still alive, and how you are going to uh, protect yourself, how you're going to do the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So again, there, there's a, a great po uh, poetry uh, uh, in Arabic which I read earlier that the worshipper prayed for something that he wanted in Ramadan and when the matter was done, when he got what he asked for, he neither prayed nor fasted. This is a classic example that we do this sometimes, that we, we pray for something, Allah give me a job, Allah give me a wife, Allah give me children. Once that is achieved, Thus, you will forget about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is really bad manners. This is something which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described in the Quran many times. That, you know, you ask, you beg me when you're in need. But when you are in, uh, in happy times, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells it, you forget about me. So the, the message from Ramadan should be that we were in his blessed time, in his blessed uh, environment. And we shouldn't forget these times. We should, you know, uh, cherish them. We should make sure that we make the most of them. But not when, when the worshiper prayed for something and then we want it. And then once we is achieved, you know, even if we think, we shouldn't think like this, that we, we might think that, okay, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven us, we should be optimistic, but we should never, you know, feel boasting that, yeah, Allah has forgiven us, and thus, you know, we should always be returning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the, 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 the mere essence of Ramadan, is to repent to him and to, 
to go back to him, Jalla wa So we should really think that we're actually dishonoring the month of Ramadan if you think like this, that you know we have achieved something and that's the end of the month and we're going to go back to our own lives. So I'm just going to quickly, uh, before we finish in the next five minutes, is just to describe those who are, feel distressed. So I'll explain the first type of people who just, they want the month to finish quickly. But this is the type of people we should be, that we should be distressed at the departure of the month of Ramadan. Because why should we be uh, uh, distressed? It's because we have tasted the sweetness of being safe from sin and the, and the, you know, and the actual hard work of patience has become you know, in a part of our daily lives. You, know, you have achieved some sort of uh, resilience to, uh, you know, to, uh, in the form of patience. And you have, you have realized that you are weak in the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Without doubt, we are weak. You know, we are weak in front of Him, and we need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Three things you have achieved in this month in order that, you know, to become a better person. So you have realized that you are, uh, when you, you have tasted the sweetness of keeping away from sin, you know, how, you know, how fresh and how great do we feel, you know, how pure do we feel when we are, you know, in the, in the Salat. You know, when some of you have been to Hajj and you've come back, and you, you know, that feeling you get when you come back, you feel really uh, upset, you know, you feel... Uh, quite uh, distressed and because that is the way the human being ought to be this is the way of the malaik i mean if, Ram if ramadan was every month of the year you'd be achieving the the iman of the malaika so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want that because he has the malaika who are worshiping him day in day out we are insan we are we are born weak he wants us to submit to him jalla wa ala, and to realize our weakness we are born weak and once we realize this weakness then we will be able to persist after Ramadan. So these people, the second type of people, we, we fasted, they fasted in the true sense. We stood in prayer at night time out of love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we uh, bid farewell to this month, we should really, uh, I, our eyes should uh, flow with tears and our heart should be broke. We shouldn't be happy to fast only 29 nights. If there's a chance to fast 30 uh, Ramadan, we should be happy. You know, but not to fast more than 30 nights is not allowed in the Sharia. Only 30 nights is the maximum. So the 30 nights, we shouldn't be you know, upset if the month becomes 30. We should be happy that Allah has given us another Jum'ah, another uh, fasting. So our heart should light up that Allah subhanahu wa has given us another opportunity to do Tawbah to Him, Jalla wa ala. So the hearts are broken. Uh, and really, this should be something we need to check ourselves that what is our feeling at the, on the eve of Eid? You know, are we uh, happy that you know, the month is gone? You know, do we want to you know the month to finish, or are we really upset that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has taken this uh, guest away from us? This is something I want you all to, brothers and sisters, to uh, you know analyze before the month comes to an end. So those amongst whom uh, were burdened with sin, we all have sins, brothers and sisters. Islam. No one is free from sins. Do not think that you know we are sin sinless. So we all hope to be freed from sin, and we hope to be from the Utaqa min al So the Utaqa are those who are free from the hell. You know when we make the dua in the, in the, at night, you might be thinking, what does Utaqa mean? Utaqa means someone who's atiq, someone who's away from the hellfire. So we all pray that we are free from the hell. And this last 10 nights is the dua which you should be making, is asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to free you, and may he free us all from the hellfire. But this is something the dua we should be always continuously making. And may he enable us to join uh, those people whose fast is accepted whose fast is accepted. So we should really make dua that may our fast be accepted all the time, up to the last minute. Even on the day of Eid, Eid al-Fitr is a day of enjoyment. Without doubt, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet ﷺ told us to enjoy the day of Eid and not to fast the day of Eid. It is haram to fast the day of Eid. But again, it should be a day of contemplation. It is a day of prize given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And again, on that day, we should still be making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that accept our fasting, accept our qiyam al you know, we are really, uh, we want, you know, we want this acceptance from you, Jalla wa and beg him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to beg him, you know. People, you know, if you beg them to a certain amount, you know, they might, you know, get fed up of it. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he doesn't, uh, he doesn't turn away from any of his abd. As long as you come to him, Jalla wa ala. Let me just quickly finish up, brother, system, otherwise I'm going to be getting no other time. So those, um, we need to ask ourselves that are we from those who are accepted? And there are signs, like I mentioned to you earlier, those are the signs that you are fasting. And inshallah, hopefully, we pray that all our fasting is accepted. And ask yourself, oh brother and sister, that which one of the groups would you like to belong to? Verily, we would like to be from the second type of people, those who are 
you know, uh, you know, distressed at the de departure of uh, Ramadan. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala tells us um, that you know they are not the same. You know, praise be to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, but most of them do not know. The problem is most people, even amongst Muslims, they do not know. They are in ghafla, they are in jahl. And Allah Subhanahu wa tells us that you know everyone shall uh, receive what he earned. You know, whatever you earn in this dunya, you will receive it in the hereafter. Let me just finish off with the two 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 hadith verses just now that the Prophet sallallahu tells us just a bit of advice for all of us for myself that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us first in Surah Al-Isra that every person acts according to his way or, or the character that he is used to. Very beautiful so, uh, ayah. We are used to now the month of Ramadan. We need to carry on in this way. But the Prophet sallallahu tells us that this is also <coughs> a condemnation of the of the kuffar who, who carry on in their in the evil deeds. This could also uh, be something for us that if we are used to a certain way now, a certain uh, sort of uh, rota in our lives, something we need to carry on in the month after Ramadan. The Prophet ﷺ told us in the hadith that the best of deeds is the ones which are done continuously. Adwa maha, the best of deeds is not something you do once in a while and that's it, you, 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 know, you put it all back where it belongs. No, you should really carry on even if it is small. So you do something, and this is really the most dearest, ahabban, the most dearest of these to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is those which are continuous, even if they are written. Like I said to you in the uh, beginning of month of Ramadan, even if you give a pound, if it's every day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will prefer that than giving a big amount and then just, you know, giving it up for the whole month. Give something continuously. Pray a little bit of the Quran, pay, you know, pray daily, read a, bit, read a, read a half a uh, page, one ayah, two ayah. We do it regular. You know, this is something which we learn from the Prophet. He did things continuously. You know, we you know we hear of this thing that you do something once in a while, and that's you know you should do it continuously. And also, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi told his Sahab, the all people, you must do whatever you can of good deeds, because the reason he gives is that because Allah does not get tired until you get tired. Allah does not get tired until you get tired. So the most beloved of deeds to Allah are those which are continuous. Even, the, even if they are little. And it is said that the family of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, when they did something, they would persist. The Ahl al-Bayt, they would persist in doing so. And this is narrated in Sahih al-Muslim. Again, I mentioned this hadith where Prophet was asked about, you know, ayyul a'mal ahab in Allah, which are the amals as good as is in the most blessed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said those which are continuous, even if they are little. The final hadith which I mentioned, Aisha radiallahu anha, she was asked about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What did he do? And whether he used to do certain things on particular days. She said no. His good deeds sallallahu alayhi wa sallam were continuous. Were continuous. And who among you could do what the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is to? None of us can do that. Without doubt. The, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his maqam is different. His maqam is Sayyid al-Anbiya wa al So who amongst you can do what the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is to do? And the acts of worship prescribed in Islam are based on certain conditions which must be fulfilled, like the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Hajj and Umrah, and the Nawafi actions, and also enjoying good, forbidding evil, seeking knowledge, jihad, and other good deeds. So strive to do continuously what you can do according to your capability. These are were, these were great words of Aisha. That she, she says, strive to worship Allah continuously according to your capability. So each one of us have a different capability. Some amongst us can do more. Some can do little. Whatever your capability, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will judge you according to that. Do not look at someone and say, oh, you know, oh, he's doing so much. Aim for that. There's nothing wrong with aiming high. But do not, it doesn't mean that you stop doing the amal. You know, sometimes you see someone doing, for instance, 20 rakats of uh, Qiyam al And, you know, we say, we can't even do two. And so we stop even doing that two rakat. Still do that two rakat. Continue doing your good deeds. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you the courage and the power to do more. So you should never let this, um, this negativity come to you that, you know, I cannot do it. And then you just, you're fed up. And we see, it, unfortunately, amongst uh, the youth in particular, 
and that you know when they see something which is unachievable, which is something which is difficult, they completely give up on it. And when it's to do with GCSE, A level the exam, if it's something that you know uh, it's discouragement towards them, they give up. So this is why you see the teachers they go back to them, encourage them, give them a small task, give them like maybe you know less work to do. So this should be really our practice as well, even in Islam, that when we see someone cannot even do the five daily prayers, give him the one prayer to do. Then from there, give him the second prayer, give him the third prayer. Do not discourage him that, oh, you're not doing the five prayers, that's it, don't come to the mosque. No, at least give him something to, to come to the masjid, and inshallah, slowly, slowly but slowly, he will come, he will do the second prayer, third prayer, fourth prayer, and at the end of it, you'll see he will, he will be doing better than you. This is really the way of Rasulullah, so he did not force anyone to, you know, to do anything, you know, and, and, uh, unless they were willing to do so. The final point, which I would just need to, uh, going back to the community affairs, is really, we should take this Ramadan as a lesson of the togetherness of the Ukhuwa of the Muslim Ummah. This is one thing I want to stress upon before I finish. Uh, but before I finish the, uh, the personal uh, uh, journey for all of us, is that we should always strive to do better than what we have done this Ramadan. Have a, uh, a little note, write it down on a piece of paper or in your phones, and then just check when next year comes, how you did this year, how much of the Quran you read, how many khatams did you do, one, two, three, four, whatever you did, write it down, so next year we'll do so much, how much of the Quran did you, uh, you know, understand, and you know, we will try to try to better our uh, lessons, this is where I'm going to go next, is the community affairs of this masjid, we need to really, as we were in Ramadan active, we need to keep this masjid alive in the months which are gone after Ramadan, we should make sure we come for the prayers, the Durus is we will try to do some effort, may Allah subhanahu accept whatever little we have done, we need to do, do more. What we have done in Ramadan is really nothing. Uh, we shouldn't think that we have achieved something huge, you know, we've climbed Mount Everest. We haven't even climbed the smallest of hills, you know, this is nothing. We should be aiming for Everest and beyond, you know. So we should really do more for the month of that, that proceed, that, you know, go after Ramadan. We should be aiming to carry on these activities, the Salat, you know, the communal gatherings, getting together once a month at least to listen to ex external speaker because you'll get bored of me if I'm speaking to you every week. You'll think Imam Sahib is saying the same thing over and over. This is one of our, unfortunately, my uh, weakness which I'm trying to work on is I tend to repeat things, but you know, may Allah, you know, guide us all to the straight path. But we need to get somebody, some motivation amongst the youth to bring them to the masjid because they are our future. Alhamdulillah, I was really happy to see the youth here in Tarawi prayers. May Allah bless them. And some uh, youth which really, they deserve a prize, you know, they used to come every day and is to come and meet me. I will not to mention their names, I don't want to shame them in front of everyone, but they really, they deserve a prize. Every night they'd come, if they had school in the morning, they'd still come with their parents. This is really, uh, uh, you know, something which their parents must be proud of, and they should give them a prize at the end of Ramadan and Eid. I'm sure you give them a prize anyway, but give them an extra bonus that, you know, better you did so and so. Alhamdulillah, Allah is pleased with you, and I'm also pleased with you. And really, this is something we need to work on in this masjid is our youth. Our youth are really, uh, illa mashallah, are really leaving the path of Islam, and this reflects upon us really badly outside in the outside world. Uh, our situation around the world is not uh, very good, as we all are, are aware. I don't need to repeat that uh, because it really, you know, uh, it distresses me quite a lot when I talk about it. So I don't want to repeat it. But really, we should think that our future are the kids, are the children, the youth, which we need to work on as parents. As, as uh, you know, people of the masjid, the, the committee, the imam, we need to work together how we can bridge this gap between them. For this, we need to make this masjid a center for all of you. This masjid belongs to every one of you, brothers. This not this doesn't belong to me or the committee or UKIM. This belongs to everyone. We should all come and participate in the good deeds. You know, I mean, no one's stopping you from coming here to do good deeds. This should be the center of communal uh, activities for both the brothers and sisters. Let me remind you today, alhamdulillah, we had a khatam today upstairs of the tafsir of the Qur'an for the sisters. May Allah bless them and reward them for the efforts. Really, they are active, brothers and sisters. Islam. They, are, uh, they have left us behind. You know, we are behind them by miles. So we have a lot of catching up to do. And after Ramadan, inshallah, we will try to have some plan in place. And I ask you for your feedback. Anything which you think will benefit us in the next uh, few, few weeks, few months, which we would like, please write it down and leave it with any one of us in the masjid that we can act upon. Anything which you think will benefit the youngsters, uh, our... Uh, also, we don't want to neglect the uh, not so young, but the young at heart as well. So we can give them some activities. And also, our sisters, they are doing a magnificent job. But we need to just also, you know, collaborate with them in order that we are both on the same page and we're all going towards the same uh, mission. Our mission really is 
dawa and charity in this in this mm -hmm. country of UK. This should be our sole purpose of living in this country. Should be dawa. If there is no dawa, but this is Islam, then there is no point. There is no use for our deen. Dawa should come uh, as a must for all of us in whatever capacity we are living in. We should spread this message of Islam to the non-believers. This is something really we're going to be asked about uh, quite heavily on the day of judgment. The, the, the non-Muslims will come, our neighbors will come and say to uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they were living with us for 20, 30 years. Not once did he mention why does he go to the masjid? Why does he pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What does he, who does he pray to? This would be really a big uh, responsibility. So please, I ask you and I urge you, and, and we are here to serve you, inshallah. Anything that you can do towards da'wah of the non-Muslims, please do that as well. And also, the biggest thing which we need, the biggest need of the hour is charity. Charity is something which is needed all around the world. Even in the UK, we have poverty is increasing the homelessness. You know, we have institutes like the National Zakat Foundation. Alhamdulillah, UK Islamic Mission is also working on this locally. We have projects, orphanage projects, food banks. We have various projects. Alhamdulillah, you know, come sit with us and we'll explain to you, inshallah, everything in detail, how we, you know, envisage and how we see the future for Muslims in this country. There are two options. Either we stick with the Jama'ah, Brother Sister Islam, or we become lone wolves. Now, the lone wolf is dangerous. The lone wolf is something which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us and His Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa told us, Alaykum bil Jama'ah, be with the Jama'ah. Do not be on your own. If you are on your own, you cannot achieve anything. All you'll do is you will create chaos and havoc in this world. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us quite clearly, Alaykum bil Jama'ah. So be with the Jama'ah, stand firm with the Jama'ah, and together we are strong. When we are together, unity brings a power. You know, this is, this is the need of the hour, that the Muslim Ummah is an orphan Ummah at the moment. There is no just leader. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will bring someone just inshallah. Don't, don't lose hope. You know, it saddens all, the, all of us, the situation that we live in, but do not lose hope. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us, has promised us, that before the day of judgment, a just ruler will come to this world, whether it is in the form of the just Khalifa, or whether it is a Imam al-Mahdi. So do not lose hope with this Islam. You know, um, it will pay you a lot that, you know, what's going on around the world in Syria, in Palestine, in Gaza, you know, in Burma, who's, who's going to answer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment? He's going to ask you, what did you do, oh so-and-so? Oh Miraz, what did you do in your capacity? Did you give charity? Did you spread the word? Did you let people know you're non-Muslim? They want to know what's going on. They're asking, why are the Muslims uh, victimized? You tell them quite clearly, as it is, there's no need to uh, use any uh, politics in this. this is not a po we are not politicians, we are Muslims, alhamdulillah. Our, our aim is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tell, tell it to them as it is. Do not be fair. Use that uh, the verse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَا إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِ Call yourself Muslim. Do not put tags on you that you are uh, the Ibundi or Sufi. No, you are Muslim, number one. And that should be where it ends. There's no need to go into uh, uh, further digging that, you know, which uh, Imam do you follow? We follow the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This should be, until we return back to this brother, sister Islam, our time is going to carry on as it is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not change us until we change ourselves. So really it starts from this community level. Alhamdulillah, I am, uh, I'll be finished. So we have to uh, come to an end, uh, given the, the red card, the brothers are uh, uh, tired. So anyway, I, I urge you to come and visit us, inshallah, in this masjid. We will have future programs in the future. May Allah subhanahu wa reward you for your time and effort. May Allah subhanahu accept our fasting. May He give us istiqamah after the month of Ramadan. And may He allow us to continue our good deeds. And may Allah subhanahu wa allow us to witness the month of Qadr. Shall we will shut the video and shall we will have question and answer after that if anybody